This is a freshwater clam. When I give it a shake, it sounds like there's something rattling inside. What's in there, you ask? Before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's crack this shell open, shall we? Bivalves, these creatures with two shells, are stuck together by what's called adductor muscles. Our clam here has these muscles in two spots. So, if you slice through the adductor muscles, popping the shell open is a piece of cake. Just cutting right here. And when we pry it open, ta-da! Look at this, will you? It's chock full of pearls. Let's snip this part. And when we fish out the pearls, these beauties were all made by this very clam. After we got them all out and counted, turns out there's a whole bunch of them. They almost seem unreal, don't they? These pearls all came from this one shell. I had two shells ready for today. And guess what? The other shell was also loaded with pearls. After gathering them all, it was quite the haul of pearls. So, how do these pearls form? And what sets apart saltwater pearls from freshwater ones? Today, we're diving deep into the world of pearls. Alright, let's break down how pearls come to be. Pearls are basically a shellfish's way of saying, I've got this under control. It's their defense mechanism to protect their insides. Bivalves have this neat trick, where they use calcium and bicarbonate ions from the water, processed through the mantle, to build their tough shells as armor. But sometimes, uninvited guests like parasites or bits of organic stuff sneak into their space. When that happens, the shellfish goes, nope, and starts coating the intruder with a substance that's pretty much shell material, sealing it away. Keep doing this over and over for a while, and bam, you've got yourself a pearl. Cultured pearls are like the DIY version. We help the process along by introducing foreign materials on purpose, setting up the perfect conditions for pearls to form. When it comes to making cultured pearls, there are a couple of main moves. First up, we might use pearl nuclei, which are basically shiny little balls made from shells. Pop those into a shellfish, and they get to work. Or, we might go a different route and insert a piece of mantle tissue from another shellfish buddy. These bits of foreign material are carefully placed either in the mantle or in the gonad, which is right at the top of the foot. That's where the magic happens. And cultured pearls start forming. Now, let's talk types. Cultured pearls split into two big families, sea pearls and freshwater pearls. Sea pearls are the divas. Usually, you get just one pearl per shell. It's a one-hit wonder. Freshwater pearls, on the other hand, are like, the more, the merrier. A single shell can produce a whole bunch of pearls. And here's a curveball for you. It's not just certain fancy shells that can make pearls. Pretty much any mollusk that can whip up a shell has the potential to produce pearls. Yep, even abalone and turban shells can join the pearl party. But when we're talking cultured pearls, we're usually talking about a very select group of shellfish. Take the freshwater mussel I mentioned earlier. Once you clear away the tissue and check out the shell's interior, you hit the nacreous layer. This is the part that's in direct contact with the mantle. The shinier and more lustrous this layer, the more drop-dead gorgeous the pearl will be. And here's the kicker. Not all mollusks have that lustrous nacre layer. Some are pretty dull, and their pearls not exactly showstoppers. Nope. So they don't make the cut for pearl farming. Wow. Interesting, isn't it? When it comes down to the crunch, sea pearls usually carry a heftier price tag than their freshwater cousins. The reason? Freshwater pearls can be produced in greater numbers and more quickly, making them less of a rare find. Often, you'll find freshwater pearls are a bit on the bumpy side, shape-wise, and don't quite glow with much luster. But as the rule goes, the shinier the pearl, the heftier the price tag. 
Size and shape are also big players in the value game. The bigger and more perfectly round, the bigger the bucks they'll fetch. Pearl colors can swing a whole palette, influenced by the type of mollusk and its digs. Sometimes, to jazz things up, pearls get a little color boost from dyes during the culturing process. But freshwater pearls, they've got that natural color vibe going on. After the whole pearl extraction episode, I went ahead and jazzed them up with some metal fittings to create earrings. I ended up gifting them to the folks around me. Pretty neat, huh? There was this one time in Vietnam, I picked up a pearl necklace. Wonder if it's the real deal? Stick around for the next video. I'll spill the beans on how to spot genuine pearls and whether my Vietnam find makes the cut. That wraps up this session. Loved diving into the pearly depths with us? Smash that subscribe button. Together, we're peeling back the layers of the natural world. This is Fishy Science, signing off.